Our digital selves have grown to become an established part of our identity. The emails that we send, the conversations that we have over social media, whether it be public or private, as well as things like the photos we share, the videos we watch, apps we download, and websites we visit all contribute to our digital personas. Unfortunately, because of the amount of our lives that lie on these devices, there are always bad actors that are looking to take and use this information. This is The Digital Prepper, and today I'm going to be talking about the different forms of malware that can be installed on your mobile devices, what the warning signs are, and how you can remove them. Before we get started, I just want to remind you guys that if you like the video and want to discuss anything regarding digital preparedness or just preparedness in general, be sure to help get this video out to more potential preppers by leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing to see more like this. With that being said, let's get started. Now, before we talk about how to remove any harmful software that is on your device, we need to go over the kinds of harmful software that is out there and that can be installed onto your device. First up is Nuisanceware, which is often bundled with legitimate applications that are normally installed on your device. Now, normally Nuisanceware does things like interrupt your web browsing with pop-ups, change your web browser's homepage settings by force, and may also gather your browsing data in order to sell it off to advertising agencies and data brokers. Normally, Nuisanceware is generally not dangerous or a threat to your security and can simply just be uninstalled from the device. Next up, we have spyware, which we can actually split up into two categories, basic and advanced. Basic spyware steals things like your operating system information or your device's clipboard data and anything else of potential value, such as cryptocurrency wallet data, or even your account credentials. Then we have advanced spyware, which is also known as stalkerware. This is often downloaded to spy on someone as an individual and sometimes can be found on computers, but it's mostly found on mobile devices. This is used to monitor emails, any texts that are sent and received, intercepting live calls for the purpose of eavesdropping, or just to record environmental noise or take photos remotely. This can also track victims via GPS or even hijack their social media applications. And finally, even though this is probably nothing any normal person would need to worry about, there's also government grade commercial spyware. An example of this is known as Pegasus, which is a spyware tool made for governments to detect and prevent a wide range of local and global threats, or so they say. However, it was found on smartphones belonging to journalists, activists, political dissidents, and lawyers, most likely abused to monitor people thought to be a threat. So now that we know about the types of harmful software that's out there, Let's talk about some of the warning signs that you can learn to see if your device might be affected by one of these softwares. First off, if you find yourself the recipient of any odd or unusual social media messages or emails or text messages, this might be a warning sign of a spyware infection attempt. If you see these kinds of messages, this does not mean that you're infected However, you should definitely delete these messages and block the sender without downloading any files, as those files will most likely be harmful software. Sometimes these phishing messages will lure you into clicking a link or executing software that will activate a spyware or stalkerware payload, and this will require your interaction. Because of this, these messages might try to panic you by demanding payment or pretending to be a failed delivery notice. Messages like this could potentially use spoofed addresses from a contact that you trust. So again, just stay calm and take a look at the message. If it looks fake, then just delete it. If it looks like it's coming from someone important, like one of your friends or a bank, you should call those people directly and not using the number that sent you the fraudulent message 
to ask and check if they actually did send you something. For example, scammers will send messages stating that they're from Amazon and that you might have a package that you need to pay for. First off, you should know that Amazon would never call you about something like that. And if you wanted to check, you could go to their website directly and contact them from their Contact Us page to check this out. When it comes to stalkerware, the bad actor will need physical access to the device itself in order to install this kind of software, and it can take less than a minute to install some variants of stalkerware. If your mobile device goes missing and reappears with different settings or changes that you don't recognize or has even been confiscated for a period of time, this might be an indicator of this kind of tampering. Now, all of this harmful software is becoming more sophisticated and can be pretty difficult to detect. However, not all forms of spyware and starkerware are invisible, and it is possible to find out if you are being monitored. If you have an Android device, you may be able to tell if your device has harmful software installed through a number of different ways. One way is to check to see if this specific setting, Allow Unknown Sources, has been enabled on your device. This setting is found in most Android devices and you can find it by going to Settings, Security, Allow Unknown Sources. But depending on your device, you may have to navigate a different way by going to Apps, Menu, Special Access, Install Unknown Applications. If this is enabled without you knowing about it, this may indicate tampering and jailbreaking of your device without your consent. However, not every form of spyware and stalkerware requires a jailbroken device, so do keep that in mind. If you have an iOS device that isn't jailbroken, these are generally harder to install malware on unless a zero-day exploit is used. And if you don't know what a zero-day exploit is, Go ahead and check out my video explaining this after watching this one. Anyways, the presence of an app called Cydia on your device, which is a package manager that enables users to install software packages on a jailbroken device, might indicate tampering unless you knowingly downloaded this software yourself. Other signs that you may have harmful software on your device is that you might experience unexpected battery drain, overheating, and strange behavior from your device's operating system or applications like slowness or other unexpected behavior. So now that we know about the signs, let's talk about how you can remove harmful software from your device. Now by design, spyware and stalkerware are hard to detect and can be just as hard to remove. It's not impossible in most cases, but do be aware that it may take some drastic steps on your part. Now, when you remove the software, especially in the case of stalkerware, some bad actors will actually receive an alert warning them that the victim's device has removed this software. I do have to state that you shouldn't tamper with your device if you feel that your physical safety may be in danger. Instead, reach out to the police and other supporting agencies. Now that that's been said, here are some removal options. First off, you should run a malware scan on your device. There are mobile antivirus solutions available that can detect and remove spyware. This is the easiest solution available, but it may not be effective in every case. There are a bunch of applications like Malwarebytes, Avast, and Bitdefender, and they all offer mobile spyware scanning tools. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to possibly look at and review some of these spyware removal softwares. Now, in the majority of situations, these softwares will remove any sort of harmful software on your device. However, this may not be the case. So if this fails, you might need to perform a factory reset on your device or consider destroying the device entirely. Performing a factory reset and clean reinstall on the device that you believe is compromised might help eradicate many forms of spyware and stalkerware. However, do make sure that you back up your important content first, either on the cloud or locally. Unfortunately, some stalkerware services may survive factory resets, 
So if a factory reset doesn't remove this harmful software, consider just factory resetting the device and then throwing it away. Now, after you've either removed the software on your device or purchased another one, some things that you should do afterwards are all things that I've mentioned before, like changing your passwords, enabling two-factor authentication on any of your accounts, and you may want to consider creating a new email address to associate to your accounts. Finally, you want to physically protect your device with either a PIN or a password to protect your mobile device from future tampering. To wrap things up, surveillance without consent is unethical and in most cases illegal. If your gut is sensing something is wrong, listen to it. A physical object is not worth sacrificing your privacy and personal security for. If your device has become compromised, you definitely need to take back control of your right to privacy. Funny enough, Google and Apple have actually cracked down on allowing harmful software on their platforms as well, including employee and child trackers, and Apple specifically doesn't even allow site loading applications, so the companies themselves seem to be helping as well, but as we all know, you can't rely on them 100%. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to get more videos like this that will help you with your digital preparedness. If you have any ideas for more videos, or just want to share your experiences with prepping, please leave a comment down below. Stay safe, stay prepared, more digital prepping to come.